sign your name. Don't sign your father or your cousin or your dog's name. Por favor. Only your name. Por favor, no firme por mal. Sí, sonríe a la señora, ni el perro, la casa, ni nada. Nada más. This is Sergeant Aaron Olson. Es el sargento Eric Olson. Del departamento de policía de Orange. Well, good morning. Buenos días. All right. Good to see everyone. This is good to see everyone. I'm going to be handing out some papers. This is my name. And I'm with the Oregon State Police. And I'm a sergeant. Which means that if the troopers get in trouble, they come after me. So, anyway, I'm going to be giving you some papers. It's got my phone number. My email address, as well as web page on the internet, and then I've got some other phone numbers on here too. So as we're doing the presentation this morning, we're going to have a, a period of questions and answers. So if you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to write them down. Then that way you won't forget. And then we'll make sure that we, we get to your questions. Just by a show of hands. How many of you are on the internet? Good for you. But first, I'm going to talk about police departments in the United States. In the United States, we have over 17,000 police departments. We have over 900,000 employees. And when you look at the population of the United States, we have over 281 million people in this country. And as you know, we have 50 states. And when it comes to police departments in America, we have different types of government agencies. We have federal police. We have state, county, and city. Now we're going to focus in on Oregon. And some of you may already know this. But for the population of Oregon, we have about 3.4 million people in Oregon. And for those of you who love the internet, that is the web page for the state government in Oregon. Специальная страница, сделанная Орской правительством. 
In some European countries, and then we have hundreds of cities. And as you can see, these are some of the logos for the different police departments. Everybody has heard of the FBI. <laughs> you can see their logo. And then, of course, the state police, who I am with. And this morning, we are in Multnomah County. And that's the logo for the sheriff's office in Multnomah County. And we are in the city of Portland. And this is a logo for the Portland Police Bureau. Let's talk about the mission of the police department. But you happen to get stopped by a police officer. It's not the end of the world. But there are certain things you need to do. Number one, pull your car over. Uh, and stop in a safe place. Please do not stop on the freeway. Pull over to the shoulder. Or if you're here on Gleason, Pull over into a parking lot or, or a driveway. Now the next thing that we would ask is that you would remain in your car and this is for your safety. Because I know that in some countries, it's not uncommon for the driver, for the driver to get out of their car and walk back to the police officer. And, and again, this is for your safety. The, the only time that we would ask you to get out of your car or the only time you should get out of your car is if the police officer asks you to get out of your car. So you stop your car. You stay in your car. Now the police officer walks up to you. The police officer is going to go ahead and explain to you why they stopped you. In America, they're supposed to do that. It's not a game show. I'm sorry. It's, a, it's not a tele, television game show where you're supposed to guess why the police officer stopped He or she will tell you why they stopped Now, as the officer is talking to you, we would ask, 
vamos a preguntar. That you do not make any sudden movements. No haga movimientos or threatening gestures. And the reason why, this is for your safety. Because I know you're wonderful people. And you're great human beings. But if I don't know you, and if I stop you, and you're going, ah! <laughs> on a traffic stop, or if you're reaching all under your seat, or sudden movement, I may pull my gun out. And I may aim at you. And you don't need that. I mean, it's stressful enough. They get, by, get stopped by a police officer. So, for your safety, don't do that. Now, now it's your turn. The officer is going to allow you to explain. For example, I stop you for not what happens if we don't have insurance? My response is you need to have insurance. <laughs> Now this this is what happens if you don't have insurance. You can get a ticket for driving uninsured, which means no insurance. You, you, you can also you can also have your car towed. And the bad thing about getting your car towed, you got to pay the tow fee, which could be three hundred to five hundred dollars. And then you have to, before you get your car out of the tow yard, you, you have to go to the police station, show you have insurance, and that you have a, a good driver's license. <laughs> So it's a good idea to have insurance. Okay, a, a good driver's license is, is valid. It's valid. Yeah, it's valid. Good question. Yes. Excellent question. The question was, you're involved in a vehicle accident, you don't speak English, what do you do? Okay, here's my answer. First thing I would say, I don't speak English. <laughs> Number one, that's important. Number two, tell them which country you're from. And what, what language you speak. What, what people will do under no circumstances 
What they'll do is they may call 911. A police officer will show up. That police officer will understand. He or she will go ahead and facilitate in the exchange of information. What, what you can do, get your driver's license out, get, get your vehicle registration, as well as your insurance card. And they'll do the same thing. The other driver. I would, I would get a piece of paper. And I would write down all the information. And also get phone numbers. And addresses. Because this is what the law requires. That, that you show your driver's license. You give that person your insurance information. And also the vehicle information. So you, you can still do things even if you don't speak English. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, the question was. You get a ticket for court. And if you don't speak English, they will have interpreters for you. So those things will be taken care of. One more question. Does DMV has cards? for the practical uh, exam. Say they already passed the exam, they go to the DMV, well, DMV has a car ready for them to pass the exam. Okay, normally you need to show up with your own car.